This will be a brief lecture on naming acids. Acids are a type of covalently bonded compounds, but they have their own set of rules for naming. And you'll need to be able to recognize names and write out names yourself um, when we get into the section on chemical reactions. And then, of course, next semester in 12.12, there's a whole chapter on acids and bases, so you will need to retain this knowledge for a bit. So, first of all, brief um, introduction. Acids are compounds that uh, release a hydronium ion, H plus ion. Um, let me say right now, I'll probably repeat myself too. Sometimes you see a hydrogen ion by itself, and sometimes you see it as a hydronium ion. They are considered by chemists to be equivalent. Think of the hydrogen ion as simply riding on the back of a water molecule, and that's what the hydronium ion is. So the hydronium ion is really how hydrogen ions exist in water, but I think chemists got lazy, and so you'll often see it as H+. How do you recognize that you're dealing with an acid when you look at a chemical formula? It will start with hydrogen. Okay, so here are examples. So you see a formula start with hydrogen, vast, vast majority of the time it's an acid. Um, what's kind of interesting is substances don't act as an acid typically unless they're dissolved in water. So for example, you have hydrochloric, uh, hydrogen chloride in gas form um, is not particularly acidic until it comes in contact with water. Okay, and that's the point at which it releases the hydrogen ion, becomes very um, caustic. So there are two types of acids. There's what we call a binary acid. Binary means two parts to it. So let's look at hydrogen chloride, for example. That's a binary acid because it has only two types of elements. And so the rules that you use for naming a binary are different than the rules we use for naming other ones. So let's look at just binary acids. If the anion, whoopsie daisy, that makes up the acid ends in ide, for example, chloride, and the vast majority of binary acids are made from an anion ending in ide, if the anion ends in ide, the acid name will be given as follows. First of all, in the binary acid, you always start the name with the prefix hydro, always. And you will always end it with the suffix ic, I-C. So let's look at HCl. Hydro, and the stem of this is chloro, chlor, hydrochloric acid. Okay, what would you name HF? That would be, hydro, it's binary, it has two different types of elements, so it's hydrofluoric acid. All right, so now we'll go on to the little bit more complicated ternary acids. Those are acids that contain three different types of elements. So now we're looking at, for example, nitric acid or nitrous acid, okay? So you see that this example is made up of a hydrogen, a nitrogen, and oxygens. Now you don't care, we're not talking about how many of each atom there are, just the fact that there are three different types of atoms makes it a ternary. All right, so now with ternary acids, some of them, most of them, if not all of them, are made from polyatomic anions. Hopefully you remember what those are. Um, like, let's say, NO3, which is nitrate, and NO2, which is nitrite. Okay, those are both polyatomic ions, and they combine with hydrogen to make a ternary acid. So, some of these polyatomic anions have a name that ends in eight, and some of them have a name that ends in ite. If the anion that makes up the acid ends in eight, A-T-E, 
the name of the acid will end in ick. So eight goes with ick. If the name of the polyatomic anion that made up the ternary acid ends in ite, I-T-E, the name of the acid that it makes when it combines with hydrogen ends in os, A-O-U-S. So ite goes with os. What you should write down at this point is, I know that can get confusing to remember, so I have this little mnemonic. He ate ick and got stomach ite us. Okay? Ate goes with ick when naming ternary acids, and ite goes with us. Let's summarize what we just learned. We talked about two different types of acid. We talked about an acid that is made up of two different types of elements, and we called that a binary acid. And we said to name a binary acid, you start it with the prefix hydro and always end it with ick. Then we talked about acids that are made of three different elements. We called those ternary acids. They don't begin with any, they don't have any prefix at all, actually. Um, and if the anion, which in the ternary case is a polyatomic anion, ends in the suffix eight, the acid will end in ick. If the polyatomic anion that was used to make the ternary acid ends in ite, the acid it makes will end in us. Okay, so here's just a flow chart of all the naming rules, and it doesn't get any more complicated. That's, that's it. Let's do a little practice. So here's the technique you go through in naming. You first have to ask yourself, is this binary or tertiary? That has only two different types of elements. It's binary, which means it begins with the prefix hydro and ends with ick, hydrobromic acid. This acid has three different elements, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So that means it, ha it has a polyatomic, and it is ternary, which means that we need to decide whether the polyatomic ends in eight or eight. So you may need to look at your polyatomic naming list, because you probably don't have all these memorized. CO3 is called carbonate, carbonate. So this polyatomic ends in eight. Remember, he ate ick. So that means the acid will end in ick. So that is carbonate, so the acid becomes carbon ick acid. No prefix, okay, because it's ternary. Here's another one, SO3 is the sulfite anion. You might, hopefully you didn't get that mixed up. SO4, these get confusing. SO4 is the sulfate anion. Okay, so the sulfite anion, he ate ick and got stomach ite us. So this goes from being sulfite to sulfur us acid. Let's make sure you can go the other way. Let's make sure that if you're given the name, you can write the formula. So anytime you see a name that has a prefix, well, there are a couple of exceptions, but 99% of the time, if you see the prefix hydro, that means it's going to be a binary acid. It's only going to be made of two different elements. So you know that any acid formula is going to begin with H, so you're safe with that. The fact that it had a prefix hydro means there's only one other element, and this stem floor tells us it's fluoride, okay, hydrofluoric acid. Sulfuric acid, there's no prefix, so what does that tell you? There's no hydro prefix. That tells you that it's ternary, and therefore it's made with a polyatomic ion. And so you've got to think backwards a little bit. If the acid name ends in ick, what does ick go with? He ate ick, okay? So that means the polyatomic ended in eight, okay? 
So what polyatomic do we know that sulfate? Okay, there you go. So now you look on your polyatomic list, if you don't remember what sulfate is, and you find that it's SO4 with the minus 2 charge. Now, this is pretty important what I'm getting ready to tell you. You need to balance the charges out when you're putting together an acid formula. Notice that sulfate has a minus 2 charge, and a hydrogen ion, of course, only has a plus 1. When you put them together, they have to be neutral overall. So in order to make it neutral or a zero charge overall, you need two hydrogen ions. The bottom line is whatever the charge is on the anion, that's how many hydrogen ions you need. So to get the correct formula is H2SO4. Here's another one. Nitrous, again, there's no prefix, which means there's a polyatomic ion in there, and it's ternary. It ends in us. Us goes with, he ate ick and got some it. See, I still have to do that after 30 years. Okay, us goes with ite. So we need to find the polyatomic nitrite. Nitrite is NO2 with a minus 1 charge. Here is the formula for nitrous acid. Your turn, okay? So don't be lazy and cheat and get to the answers first. So really try to do these on your own first and then go to the next page and I'll give you the answers. Okay, good. The first two are binary acids, so I start out right away putting hydro and ick. And then in the root is simply represented by what the element is attached to the hydrogen. So this is, I, this is iodine, but you wouldn't put iodine ick acid, so it's iodic acid. Iodic acid. And if you get these wrong, I mean, some of them are a little tricky. It's okay as long as you get close. Same thing here. The root of chlorine is chlor, so hydrochloric acid. Now, the rest of them, the other three, are ternary because they all have three different elements and they all have oxygen in them. So I have to determine the polyatomic in each of them. So SO4 is sulfate, which means the acid will end in ick, okay? So I go from sul... You would think that it should be sulfic acid. I guess somebody thought that sounded funny, so they put in another syllable, sulfuric acid. But again, as long as you get close, I'm not going to mark you wrong. All right, NO3 is nitrate, so... Going, starting with the stem nitric, nitric acid. Okay, and finally, IO4 is kind of a weird polyatomic, but that's an iodate ion. And so and another acid ends in ick. I should have given you an ite one. Oh, well. So the stem here is iode. So, iodic acid. Okay, that's it. So now let's practice going the other way from a name to a formula. Again, put the video on pause and try to do it yourself first. All right, hydrobromic acid, that's just easy. Everyone memorizes the halogen um, binary acids pretty quickly. I probably shouldn't have even given it to you. All right, so nitrous acid, okay, ends in what goes with us? Ite. Okay, so that means nitrite is the polyatomic, which is NO2. Okay, it has a charge of minus one, so you only need to combine it with one hydrogen. And phosphoric acid. Again, it's ternary, ends in ick, so that means it came from 8 phosphate, eh, too crowded, which is PO4, which has a minus 3 charge. Pay close attention to the charges. That means you need 3 hydrogen in order to balance out that minus 3 charge. And finally, this one I wonder if it stumped you, um, hydro 
tells you that it's a binary acid, so there's only two elements in it. And telluric acid, that's actually an element on the periodic table called tellurium. And Now you have to also look at where the anion is located on the periodic table. Tellurium is in group 6A along with oxygen and sulfur. And so as an anion, all of these uh, nonmetals in 6A, when they become ions, anions have a charge of minus 2. So what you may have missed is the fact that you need 2 hydrogen to balance out the minus 2 charge of telluride ion. So the correct formula for hydrotelluric acid is right here. This flowchart may seem kind of confusing, but actually it's really good. It reviews all of the nomenclature or naming we've learned so far. So off to the right side are acids and the rules we just learned in this um, lecture. And off on the left-hand side covers ionic and covalent naming. And it's just a, a cool little sheet that summarizes everything. So obviously if it's ionic or covalent it doesn't have a hydrogen ion. Um, and if it's binary, means has only two different types of elements, it will always end in IDE. That means, and so if it's binary, that means in both these cases, it means there's no polyatomic ion. Okay, there's no polyatomic ion. The ending will always be IDE for ionic and covalent. If there's no metal, that means it's covalent, and that's the covalent when you use prefixes, mono, di, tri, etc. If the metal forms more than one cation. What they're referring to are transition metals, okay? And that means you use Roman numerals if they're transition metals. So anyway, I don't need to go over this in any more detail, but it's just a nice summary chart of what you should know by now um, out of this unit about naming compounds.